The People's Liberation Army Navy's new KJ-600 airborne early warning prototype has resurfaced in spectacular high-resolution form. Prototype number 7101, still sporting its peatote tube on the nose, was captured in vivid detail, offering enthusiasts their clearest look yet at China's latest carrier-borne eye in the sky. From afar, its silhouette might evoke memories of the Grumman E-2 Hawkeye series, but a closer inspection reveals a distinct design philosophy. Today, we'll walk through what these fresh images tell us about its shaping, its heritage, and the clever engineering choices behind it. Let's explore how merely removing size constraints for modern carriers has reshaped a tried-and-true concept. This first prototype, bearing the designation 7101, retains its pitot tube, a crucial instrument for measuring airspeed, reminding us that these trials remain very much in progress. The high-resolution photographs showcase panel lines, sensor fairings, and antenna placements that were only hinted at in earlier grainy long-range shots. Even the rivet patterns along the fuselage become visible, underlining China's commitment to detailed flight testing. Such clarity lets analysts track changes from one flight test to the next, whether in fairing shapes or sensor upgrades. It's a tangible sign that the People's Liberation Army Navy intends to field this system sooner rather than later. At a glance, the KJ-600's general configuration nods to the established Northrop Grumman E-2 Hawkeye design with its high wing and prominent radome. However, the differences become clear when you compare carrier requirements past and present. The original E-2 had to squeeze into low-hanger spaces aboard mid-20th century carriers. The KJ-600's vertical stabilizer is taller, unburdened by those older constraints. This choice hints at China's newer carriers being built with larger hangar decks in mind, allowing for a larger control surface that can improve stability and handling in the demanding environment of carrier operations. One of the most eye-catching features is that pitot tube still mounted beneath the nose cone, a clear signal that speed calibration remains a priority in flight trials. Surrounding it, the forward fuselage shows a smoother contour than earlier mock-ups suggested, implying aerodynamic refinements to reduce drag and improve fuel efficiency. On either side, small sensor fairings blend into the skin, hinting at autopilot redundancies and environmental sensing arrays. These subtle but critical elements speak to a rigorous testing program designed to nail down flight characteristics before any mass production begins. The vertical stabilizer, long known among spotters as a telltale landmark, demonstrates how China dared to think beyond the E-2's limitations. By not having to fit a low-clearance hangar, engineers elevated its height to boost yaw control, a boon in tight deck operations when crosswinds swirl around a carrier. This larger control surface should help the KJ-600 maintain heading accuracy during carrier approaches, especially in rough seas. It's a clear case where removing one design restriction unlocks performance gains in another domain. Despite its unique silhouette, the KJ-600's radar pedestal and asymmetric maintenance ladder betray its lineage. Those features trace back to the Y-7 platform, itself a derivative of the Antonov AN-24 transport. By leveraging existing designs, China accelerates development while keeping costs in check. The radar pedestal's shape suggests a phased array antenna housing capable of 360-degree coverage, and the offset ladder design grants maintenance crews safer, more ergonomic access for sensor swaps. This melding of proven architecture with new mission systems exemplifies pragmatic engineering. The decision to base key structural elements on the Y7 airframe underscores a broader strategy. Adapt what's reliable, and focus resources on mission-critical upgrades. The Y-7's proven airframe has borne everything from transport missions to electronic warfare experiments, so it offers a stable, well-understood flight envelope. Engineers could concentrate on integrating the airborne early warning radar, communication suites, and tactical data links without reinventing the entire airframe. This reuse of heritage design accelerates testing and preserves a high degree of system reliability. 
As the People's Liberation Army Navy prepares to fold the KJ-600's wings and stow it below deck, engineers will focus on refining the mechanisms that lock the wingtips and secure the aircraft in the hangar. At the same time, communication specialists will test how its tactical data link shares real-time tracks with fighters and surface ships. These coordination drills are essential to ensure that warning information flows seamlessly from the radar arrays to combat commanders. Deck crews will practice marshalling and refueling under simulated flight schedules, confirming that the KJ-600 can operate alongside J-15 fighters without slowing sortie generation. Ultimately, this integration phase will prove whether the KJ-600 can fulfill its role as the nerve center of a carrier battle group. Under its domed radome lies a multifunction phased array radar capable of detecting low-flying targets at extended ranges over the horizon. Early analysis of the radome's shape and size suggests an improvement in antenna aperture compared with previous prototypes, promising finer resolution and faster track updates. Alongside the primary radar, infrared sensors and electronic support measures will be evaluated for their ability to spot stealthy cruise missiles or detect emissions from hostile vessels. Laboratory, calibrated tests of signal processing algorithms will run in parallel with in-flight trials to refine clutter rejection and target discrimination. These combined efforts aim to deliver a sensor suite that keeps pace with the modern threats of anti-access warfare. By fielding the KJ-600, China moves closer to a carrier-based early warning capability on par with established maritime powers. The aircraft will extend the People's Liberation Army Navy's surveillance footprint far beyond line of sight, granting commanders precious minutes of warning against incoming threats. In peacetime, its patrols could map shipping lanes and monitor foreign naval maneuvers, enhancing situational awareness in contested waters. Export customers may follow suit if the KJ-600 proves reliable, potentially reshaping regional balances in the Indo-Pacific. As the prototype evolves toward full operational status, each test flight brings the vision of a fully networked carrier strike group significantly closer to reality. With Prototype 7101's clear images now circulating, expectations are rising for carrier deck trials before the end of the year. Observers will watch for folding wing tests, catapult launches, and arrested landings all critical steps for proving carrier compatibility. If these go smoothly, a small initial batch could join the inaugural carrier air wing on China's Type 003 class. Beyond that, export potential may emerge for navies looking to bolster their own airborne early warning capabilities. Either way, the KJ-600's reappearance in such crisp detail marks a milestone in China's naval aviation ambitions.